Hello, I everybody. I get half my day in a replacer. Can you expand on this for that matter? What are my daily activities, habits that serve you well? So immediately, first thing I do when I go in to work is I spend about 20 to 30 minutes, uh, sometimes a little less, just scanning the first two or three pages of orders um, in, in the Manage Orders tab of Seller Central. Um, what I'm looking for is consistent orders out of the ordinary where I'm seeing a product that's selling very quickly. So let's say, you know, out of the first hundred products on that first page, 20 of them or 15 or even 10 of them are the same product. Most likely something happened in that listing where I could probably increase my price and sell it at a little higher margin, right? So first, I'm always looking for those opportunities because it might not seem like a lot, but let's say you only raise three products a day by $2. You know, and you're selling 30 products a day for those products. That's 90 products times $2. That's $180 in profit more a day times 365 days a year. You're talking about a lot of money. You know, you're talking 50, 60, $70,000 in extra money. So it's worth the extra 15 minutes every day. Um, and then I immediately go to my repricer and I'm looking at my top selling SKUs, you know, usually the top 200, uh, but I really like to hammer in on the top 50, right? Because my top 50 SKUs are usually what's generating a majority of my revenue and a majority of my profit. So I wanna really make sure that not only are those top 50 SKUs selling properly at a, at a price that is buy box optimized and also profitable, but also making sure that that inventory has ample supply and that I'm not about to go out of stock because if I'm about to go out of stock, that's another problem, you know, and I got to get on my buyers like, hey, why is our 35th best selling item? Why do we have no inventory coming in? Why is it not on any pending orders? And why does this vendor have it in stock? And why don't we have it? Like, where's the disconnect here? And then I'm just looking at, you know, stranded inventory, I think is important, which a lot of people uh, pass up on. You know, you could have a, let's say five, even 500 units in stranded inventory at, at 20 bucks. It's ten thousand dollars. It's a it's a it's a nice chunk of change. I'm just looking for outliers. I don't know what price you're using, Scott, but I know certain repricers like uh, Seller Snap they have exportable files where you could create prerequisites. Like you know, it's been at my floor price for thirty days. That's a product that we want to look at. It's been at my ceiling price for seven days. That's a product I want to look at because that means I'm probably missing out on, on money opportunities. And if it's been on my floor price for 30 days, I'm missing out on sale opportunities. Well, that kind of dovetails into another question, which is what is your process for deciding when to clearance and or liquid merchandise? Yeah, so there's How no blank. Hold on to? Yeah, so there's no blanket statement. I couldn't I couldn't tell you if this happens, this happens, this happens, then do this. Because every listing's so different, right? Because you could be on a listing that you've had inventory for 60 days and you haven't sold any, you know, but the guy who's been dominating the buy box has five units left. And if you drop the price now, you're gonna create the new low offer. Sure. Instead of just waiting an extra couple of days for that guy to sell out, right? So it really is determined, uh, it's really determined on the competition, how many sellers are on the listing, how much inventory they have, you know, what type of buy box you're winning, the opportunity to possibly run some ads, win some more buy box. So it really depends on the situation. But if everything about the keep a chart, the competition tells me that I got to get out of this, then I'm getting out of it. But I usually like to run its course for at least 30 days. And the reason why I just had a, a foundation call with two of our inner circle members and I was telling them this is the same thing. Like as a buyer, you made a confident decision to purchase this product based on an educated analysis of the current market and possibly even current data from your own company. Why are you going to turn back on that decision that you calculated and made in that moment just after 30 days, right? Everything made sense when you bought it, unless something drastic happens, ride it up. So if we've got plenty of storage capacity at, at Amazon and it's a durable product with no expiration date, there's no reason not to just sit on it and wait for the price to return to its normal. Yeah, unless you need the money to buy more inventory, but if it's not holding, if it's not affecting your business, yeah, let it ride out. You know, it might, if, if everything about the keep a chart usually says it will go back up, then yeah, I'm waiting, I'm waiting to make a couple more dollars on it if I don't need the money right now. And if right, you're like, you. if so if you're close to selling out, should you raise the price so that it like slows things down? So it's, because you don't want to completely sell yes. out. Like yes. you want to go as slow as possible. Yes, and unfortunately having this conversation reminds me of the 
I don't want to call it a broken system we have, but we miss out on a lot of opportunities by not having inventory in stock. You know, you figure if you got a hundred SKUs that go out of stock for even five days at a time, you're talking about a lot of missed opportunity over the course of a year. You know, a ton of opportunity, tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars opportunity. So it's tough, you know, it's it's tough to kind of get get the right balance there. And now that I went off on a complete tangent, I lost, I forgot your original question. Side. No, that was it. it. Like you answered it. So like, do I raise the price? Like, so say oh, something is yes. selling for $40 yes. and do what I raise the price still stay within where the range, but I yes. go high. So I'm yes. not the one people are necessarily buying from. Yes. And if, 100%. And if, okay. 100%. And, and I do that very often. Um, I've created a, a report called uh, Missed Opportunities. Right, so this is like a listing where I'm at my ceiling price or I only have 10 days of inventory left, right? And I'm selling through it and it's like, in 10 days, there's no way I can get more inventory. I wanna I wanna pull two or three dollars more out of this product, at least capitalize on the opportunity until I can get more or at least eliminate the time span of out of stock, you know? And, and that's really if you're like full volume, right? If you're focusing right now on just growing profits and reinvesting into your business, then maybe that's not the option for you, you know? But that's that's the way I like to navigate. Yo, Eric, I had to quote that one, man. Every SKU that moves 100 a month is a, an opportunity to take. I had to quote that one down, that was a good one. Yeah, this is very true. Even less than that. I, I, I capitalize on products that sell 20 units. Yo, can I throw a review question? Sure. Yeah, just how to raise them. You know about moving moving skills, fast moving skills, but what else can I do to kind of improve the review amount? Uh, seller reviews or, or product Correct. reviews? Seller reviews, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, so a seller reviews really at the end of the day, it's a volume game, man. You know, because even with some of these seller feedback softwares, you're talking less than 1% of customers are leaving a review. So, you know, it's really just about a volume game. The difference between selling a thousand orders a month and 5,000 orders a month is the difference of a 5X review that month, you know? Yeah. So what there are also. <clears throat> Go ahead. For a private label product. So for private label, you'd be looking more for uh, product reviews. Um, where there are some ways within Amazon's terms of service um, where you can solicit those uh, without essentially asking for a positive review. Um, and you could just uh, Google, or not even Google, on Seller Central, they have a full, I'll actually post the link in the chat. They have like a breakdown of what you can and can't include in inserts. But for private label, you definitely want product reviews over seller feedback. No, but yeah, for sure, I'll take that, but definitely more interested on the seller reviews now. Yeah, listen, Probably there's softwares can... like Feedback 5, Feedback Wiz, um, but there's like so many of them, man. But at the end of the day, it's a volume game. If you're not selling a lot of inventory, you're not gonna get a lot of reviews. Great, great call. Another great call, appreciate all of you. Yeah, absolutely. So if you got any questions, hit us in the Facebook group and uh, we'll see you all next week. Same time, same place. Hey, doll. All right. Have a good evening. Good night. I'll see you at the top. Good night, night. everyone. Hey, lit.